Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Sama. So in today's video, I want to talk about this new um, information that came out about uh, uh, Boyede. I'm going to say this, right? Especially for his followers. I'm not here to convince you about anything. Mm -mm. I'm just coming to show you what information is out there. Whatever you do with the information is left to you. So that's all. I really need to clarify that. Okay. I'm just giving you the information that is out there. Okay. So recently there has been a report that came out. This is not Nigeria level, international level. They call the Pandora Papers. The Pandora Papers are a release of more than 12 million leaked documents that reveal the hidden and sometimes unethical or corrupt dealings of global wealthy and elite, including prominent world leaders, politicians, uh, corporate executives, celebrities and billionaires. It is the largest such data dump released till date, larger than the previous Panama Papers and Prada Papers leaks. The paper reveals the offshore interests and activities of such individuals with their tax sheltering schemes. The name Pandora was given as these documents may prove to open a Pandora's box of investigations and lawsuits in the future. Long story short, these people basically investigate proper investigative journalism involving lawyers and journalists and different kind of people that worked to get this information out. Among the list of billionaires that were listed, criminals, corrupt politicians, and so many, and a pastor's name is on this list. To imagine that a pastor's name is on this list. Before I say anything else, for anyone that does not know, you know, a few years ago, I think 2012, 2014, there was another document in the UK that came out where they were talking about church is supposed to be a charity. If you set up a church, you're not supposed to pay tax and stuff like that because it's a charity. And most churches in the Western part of the world, they actually do charities with their, with the tithes and offerings or whatever they collect, right? And they have been investigating Oyedepo's church as far back as 2012. There is this article, this article by Daily Mail, this was 2012, okay, which says laughing on his private jet, right? And then it said 93 million pastor accused of exploiting British worshippers. This article, if you read it, I'll put a link to this article so you guys can check it out because I always want you to get information, not from me, get it where it is available. This is Daily Mail of the UK. And you see them, if you read on, you see where it says, Toyota was accused of cynical exploitation after its British branch received 16.7 million in donations. Because the thing is this, if your church members are donating to a church, they expect you to use it for charity. Okay, but when they look and they cannot see where the money that is donated, they don't see where that money is going back into the people. That is what charity is supposed to be, impacting lives, financially doing stuff for the community. Then they have to question, are you really a charity? That is what that is about. That same article, there's a place where they wrote, today's mail on Sunday revelations about the Winners Chapel movement, which holds charitable status. You see that status? You can't joke with it in Western society, okay? So it says, holds charitable status, have pointed the charity commission to carry out an assessment of the church. They had to carry out an assessment of the church to see, you're collecting donation as a charity. Where is it going? You know, this is not Nigeria where nothing is investigated. As far back as 2014, Pulse Nigeria wrote this one, in which they said, uh, Pastor Oyedepo banned from entering the UK. A lot of people would have noticed he doesn't go to the UK anymore. Reports have said that he's banned from entering the UK. And every airline from that report was saying that airlines have been warned that anybody that brings in to the UK will be fined. If you're banned from the UK, if you enter, they will deport you. But the airline that even brought you will be fined. So his private jet, he cannot fly them to the UK. Okay? If you read on, and like I said, I'll put a link for this as well. You can go read it for yourselves. And he says there's an airline alert on him and on Sunday, the 9th of August 2014. And the alert warned that any airline that goes against the ban will pay a fine of $2,000. This is a pastor. I'm reading, I'll put a link. You guys can go read it. So I saw that, like I said, I'm only coming here to give you whatever information is out there, right? In this Pandora papers, you're hearing corruption, you're hearing uh, fraudulent, you know, another thing, another thing I need to explain is this. 
they discuss in that Pandora Papers how people make money and they try to snatch the money offshore that nobody can ever take the, the money off them, right? And they find ways to disguise their money so you will not know that the money belongs to them, okay? So they could be buying shares or investments or whatever, but they don't want anybody to know that it's their money. So that way they are hiding it that people do not know that it's their assets. And then you ask yourself, according to this, why would a pastor need to hide his money? Why would a pastor need to disguise his money? Why would a pastor need to keep his money offshore? A lot of fraudulent activities involved in this report. And you say, why would a pastor's name be there at all? They are mentioning names, names like Abacha. Talking about Abacha stealing billions from Nigeria. And then a pastor's name is mentioned. It's enough for you to sit back and think. But when they're mentioning the amount of money and Oyedepo's name, and you are thinking, Oyedepo is almost 70 years old. And you sit back and ask yourself, what does he need all that money for? How does a man like this open his mouth and preach on at the pulpit about building your own treasures in heaven? How? How does he come to the congregation and tell them about building up your own treasure in heaven? But he is building up his own treasures on earth. Almost 70 year old man need all this money for offshore. I'm going to be honest, it breaks my heart when I see things like this because on a Sunday, you will see they want money to build a new toilet. They will tell people to donate. They will tell you to bring your widow's might, but their own billions are stored offshore. But they come and they take. You know, I made a video where I said, How can a country? of so many poor people have the richest pastor in the world. He has been on the record as the richest pastor. The same thing, politicians are taking money and stealing and putting away. And you're wondering why we're so poor. And then you see the same behavior in a pastor. It, it, it's enough to make you sit back and think. Like I was saying, they will come to church and ask you to bring your widow's mind. Some of the projects that they are doing in these churches Somebody like Oyedepo can fund it single-handedly and it will not feel like paying from his account. They pay tithe, they pay offering. After they've done all of that, and they will not tell them there is a new project, donate for this fund, donate for that fund. They will keep milking the people. That's the word, milking them dry. And they keep telling your widow's mind. Try God and see. You'll see what God can do. With the little that you have, you'll see. But then the magnitude of money they have, keeping their own offshore, and they are milking you of the small money you have to buy a garden for your family to drink. Some of the projects in a lot of these churches, you will see some project that he will come up and set up a new donation for, uh, we are raising money for so and so for the church. We are raising money. They will ask him for donations. Some of those donations, people have already paid their tithe and paid their offering. Some of those donations, somebody like Oyedepo can fund it single-handedly. And his account will not even feel it. It will be like removing a spoon of water from the ocean. He's storing his own wealth offshore for his children. Read that article. It mentions, let me find it. His children, let me see. Where is that? You will see. And they say, my daddy in the Lord. That's your choice. But when it comes to his money, he knows who his real children are. Okay? Uh, let me read this one from Premium Times. It says, Pandora Papers, how Bishop Oyedepo set up family offshore company in tax haven. These are people who tell you to pay your tithe. You have to pay your tithe, but they don't want to pay tax. Tax. The Bible says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. You're supposed to pay your tax as a good citizen. But he's putting his money in a tax haven. For those that do not know, people that look for ways to avoid paying tax, where they go to hide their money. And then he goes on to say, after Chris Oyahilome of Christ's embassy and the late Temitope Joshua, the founder of Synagogue Church of All Nations, David Oyedepo, the founder and general overseer of Living Faith Church Worldwide, is the latest Nigerian mega preacher found to have set up a family offshore company in the British Islands, right? And then he goes on to say, Mr. Oyedepo's offshore company popped up as part of an ongoing global, global, not national, not Nigerian level, global Pandora Papers reporting project led by International Consortium um, of Investigative Journalists. It goes on to say, the project involved 600 journalists 
from 150 news organizations around the world, sorting and analyzing a trove of almost 12 million confidential files, tracking down and interviewing sources and adding context using public records and other documents. Okay, let me go back to where it says, every member of Mr. Oedipo's family are listed as shareholders. Mr. Oedipo and his wife, Faith, are the largest shareholders with 30% of shares each. If you read on, you see his children, his biological children, have 10% each. His two sons uh, have 10% of the shares each. Love and Joy, the two daughters of the cleric, were similarly given 10% each. You're shouting daddy in the Lord. When it comes to money, he knows who his children are. And you are there shouting daddy in the Lord. Like I said, I just wanted to come here and present it. This is information out there. For a, a, a man, you know, I made the post the other day where I was talking about Mary Slessor and somebody was uh, ranting. Hey, hey, we praise uh, white people. See, I don't care if Mary Slessor is white, purple or pink. It does not matter to me. What that woman did, Mary Slessor left her comfortable country and came to one remote village, dedicated her life. She didn't marry, didn't have children. She dedicated her life to missionary work. Think about it. A woman, Mary Slessor, left her comfort of her country left her family and friends and loved ones to go to a village in the middle of nowhere. No electricity, nothing. Deprived herself of so much. She chose not to be married or have kids. Dedicated her life for the life of others. Not even people in her own community. She went to people she never met in her life. Chose to dedicate her life to do whatever she did among those people. Lived there, died there, and she's buried there. And you think uh, somebody was saying you have to praise a white woman. I don't care what color her skin is. She's done something amazing. There's nothing wrong in saying that person did something amazing. She lived like the villagers till the day she died of ordinary malaria. A woman that did something that you and I have not done. And many of us are not willing or planning to ever do in our lives. Look at mega GOs. You think all this kind of GO will go and do what Mary Slater did? Leave their comfort to go and stay in the middle of nowhere. You think if Mary Slessor wanted to use the opportunity to enrich herself, she couldn't have done it. She did it. Let's be honest. There are a lot of people, when you see people that make sacrifices, you look at the life of Christ. When you see people like Mary Slessor and you look at the life of Christ, you can actually see a bit of similarity in their lives. But all these ones, almost 70 year old man, enriching himself so much, what did he want to take all that money to? This man, eh, even all the money he has in Nigeria, he can never be poor again in his life. What does he want to do with all of this money? What? You know, sometimes I wonder, how do people like this drive on the street and see poor people? And, you know, look at the wretchedness of the country. It was when I came abroad, I saw that in the, in the morning, people can eat breakfast in the, in the morning. Church will organize, they will, on the street, they will be giving out free stuff. If you're home, let me not go there. I saw that and I just thought to myself, like, it doesn't surprise me, to be honest with you. But I'm just presenting it there for those that may not, you know, I want people to see this. A man that is almost 70 years old. How much money he's acquiring? A 70 year old man. But how much wealth he's building up for himself? So people will be like, oh, you know, he, he, he wrote bestseller book. He wrote this one. He wrote that one. Go and check the records. This man has been investigated long, even before he wrote those books. But bottom line, it shows you the selfishness of us as human beings that a cool wage you are for earthly wealth does not satisfy. We should fight against the spirit of greed. How much money do you need in this life? How much money do you need? Like I said, there are a lot of money donations that they'll be collecting in that church that this man can fund single-handedly. But they, they, they start their own money offshore and they tell you to bring your widow's might. But their own abundance, they are storing it offshore. Story for their children. Like, I don't even know what else to say about this. I'm going to leave all the links for you guys to check it out. You can read it for yourself. It's not so I said. Read it international level, not Nigerian local level. Okay, international level. And to imagine that a preacher who says God called him can be mentioned among a lot of the people on this list. A bacha. A lot of people that have taken money from the country. A pastor. His name can be mentioned among them. Mentioned among this kind of behavior, it's left for you to sit back and think. You know, I keep saying it. You said it by yourself, you know. You don't know somebody else. There was a time when 
was bragging, he was quoting Philippians 4 19. I, 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 and I, too, I made the video in which I said, and I'm telling you guys, go check your Bible. Few verses before that, you will get the clearer message. He's saying, I have learned the spirit of being content. A contented spirit will not be looking for I, more and more and more. How much money does an individual need in this life? My God will supply all your needs. What are your needs? Separate 100, 1,000 cars is not a need. 10 cars is not a need. That is a want. You just want it. You don't need them. This Oyedepo has used it to preach when they said he was the richest pastor. And he said, what is that? Uh, no, that's not my word. I am what uh, Philippians 4.19. Philippians 4.19 says, my God shall supply all your need. What do you need? Do you need 10 cars? Do you need 10 houses? Do you need several private jets? What do you need? Your need and your want are two different things. If you're ever confused as to what the standard should be, ask yourself, will Jesus do that? That is always a good guide. Will Jesus do that? Will Jesus do this? Will Jesus go and disguise his money so that it will not be known that the money is his own? Will Jesus acquire this amount of wealth? Was that why Jesus came and died? Look at the life of Christ and the life of the apostles. Which of them lived this kind of a life? Which of them made money such a priority in their lives? How can a one person have all this money in a country full of abject poverty? How? How? Why would he need to hide his money? What, tell me why anybody needs to hide his money. A preacher that said God called him. Why would you need to hide your money? Like I said, seeing his name mentioned alongside some of these other people is enough to make you sit back and think and say, is this what a pastor's name should be mentioned about? Is this? I saw that and I said, let me come and share with you guys. As always, whatever your opinions are, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Until the next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.